Hey everybody, Ryan here coming at you with another review in my top 250 favorite film series. Today we're going to be talking about John Cassavetes' The Killing of a Chinese Bookie. Alright, The Killing of a Chinese Bookie is probably the second or third film of yes, John Cassavetes that I watched. The first one that I ever watched was um, A Woman Under the Influence, and then I saw Shadows, and then I saw this. So it was the third one that I ever saw. And those of you who know John Cassavetes, um, he's an actor. He was in The Dirty Dozen, Rosemary's Baby. Um, he was married to Gina Rollins, and he was also a very very influential independent filmmaker. He independently financed all of his films and promoted them using his own production company and they were groundbreaking in terms of independent cinema. It's definitely a love it or hate it kind of director because of his style. A lot of the actors improvise. He's known for very long scenes of improvised acting. Uh, I happen to really enjoy that. I didn't at first but then I got used to it and I really dig it. And his films are also known as being really rough looking because he uses um, very, usually his films have really low grade film stock, very cheaply made, and it doesn't look like it's the best quality film. And you could kind of see that in all of his films, especially the five that are on the Criterion um, John Cassavetti set, which I have. I have the DVD set. I don't have the Blu-ray set yet, but I have the DVD set. I've had it for years. And so John Cassavetes is a phenomenal director. Even people who don't like him give him props for being so influential in independent cinema. So I'm pretty sure this came out after um, after a woman, the woman Under the Influence. I think that was like, you know, that was, it's considered like his big hit, his like, acclaimed masterpiece and it was it's widely acclaimed and so I'm pretty sure that was his film they made before this so coming off that success this film came out Killing of a Chinese Bookie and this film was released in 1976 and it was re-released in 1978 the film is about um it stars Ben Gazzara a phenomenal actor I think he's very underrated. I grew up with him um, watching some like old war movies, uh, mainly Bridge at uh, Ramagan. I think that's I forgot how you pr how you pronounce that. Um, big fan of war movies, and so I've been a fan of his for a while. You know when I first saw this, so he plays a nightclub owner named Cosmo Vitelli. And he's so cool and kind of suave. That's his. That's how he tries to come across, like a made kind of man. Um, very important. Very, you know, he's an owner of a club. The club itself is kind of like a slightly popular, rundown entertainment slash strip club, uh, stip, uh, strip club kind of deal where the women perform. But then people come out and it's like they give full-on shows. Just just a fun, sleazy kind of nightclub feel. Dark, um, you know, the the man of the hour, or the, the host is, you know, a man that looks like he's wearing like pale face makeup. Kind of looks like a clown, kind of a goofball type thing. And all the women come out and it's more of like a performance. And, you know, Cosmo is like... He's a guy on the intercom upstairs, you know, and introducing everybody, trying to crack jokes. Reminds me of, um, you know, Jake LaMotta in Raging Bull, directed by Martin Scorsese, you know, with Robert De Niro. And, um, yeah, so the whole nightclub stuff, you actually see performances of people in the nightclub. You spend a lot of time in the nightclub in this film. But Cosmo is also a very, he's very bad with money. And he gambles a lot of money, and he's in debt, greatly in debt. And he doesn't want to lose this life that he has. 
And so basically, through a series of situations, he is given the opportunity to kind of redeem himself by killing somebody. That's all I'm going to say about the plot from here on out. This film is a wonderful character study of Cosmo, what he likes, just kind of seeing how he is as a person, what he struggles with, and you kind of root for him even though he is kind of a sleazy guy. He isn't really the best, you know, character to root for um, because he kind of puts himself in, the, in these situations and he is egotistical, but he kind of has that charming side of him too. And, um, you know, the film is, it's my favorite John Cassavetes film, bar none. Like, I love this film so much. And there's some people that don't like it at all. It's, there's some really long, drawn-out scenes that he does in the nightclub. And it's almost like the actual plot of the film is so, like, um, so thin that it's like the background, the actual narrative plot, because you're really just following Cosmo in his day-to-day -day life and his interactions in the club, seeing performances with the girls, all this kind of stuff. And so, like, the plot is very thin, and it only comes into play when it really needs to to get to the next situation. But there's a lot of improvised stuff, a lot of scenes. The camera just rolls as people play off each other. And... Um, the first edition that came out was one hour and thirty or er, a hundred and thirty-five minutes. The re-release version, which is kind of the director's cut, uh, is a hundred and eight minutes. Ben Gazzara did not like the original cut of the film. Uh, John Cassavetes eventually did the re-edit, and it was a hundred and eight minutes, brought down from a hundred and thirty-five. I personally love the longer version, just because I love those longer scenes. Now. The recut version doesn't, or the edited version, it like changes some scenes, takes some scenes out, just changes some of the editing. It's a little bit tighter, but it still has that Cassavetes improvised feel. But I still prefer the longer version, even though Cassavetes himself, I think, preferred his director's cut, but I prefer the longer version. And um, I really, really, really like this film. If you hear that, somebody just fired up their Mustang outside. So I'm going to wait till they're done. All right, I'm back. So The Killing of a Chinese Bookie, I have both versions in this Criterion set right here. I love this film so much. It's just the feeling I get when I watch it. I feel like I'm literally stepping into this guy's world, almost like I'm in debt. And I'm, you know, going through these same situations that he is. And um, I don't know, that's one thing I like about films is that it gives you a chance to step into somebody else's shoes, what they go through, what choices they put themselves through. And even though I don't want to be in his position at all, it's interesting watching a movie, rooting for a character that's kind of like that. I mean, you're not rooting for him per se. As a, as a viewer, you just kind of automatically kind of go with the main character of, with what they do. But um, yeah, I highly recommend this film. You gotta be patient with John Cassavetes' films if you're not used to a slower-paced kind of film, but this is definitely one I recommend. To me, this is actually his more, um, you know, accessible film to people who haven't watched. Um, I like the 108-minute version, but I just prefer the longer version. So, anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Plenty more to come. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. He's still out there with it. I'm just going to keep filming because I'm not going to wait. He just likes to sit in his car and he has all these sound, like, he, like, put a different muffler on it and all this stuff to make it seem like it's bigger than it is. You, can you hear that? So annoying.